Hello, everyone. Welcome to our panel today. Uh, my name is Karen Ober, uh, and I'm going to just uh, say a few words to begin. Um, before I start, I just want to mention that um, this panel has been partly organized, um, or has been organized in part as, as part of the uh, University Global Coalition SDG Action and Awareness Week. Uh, and so this is the last day of the week, but um, uh, if you're interested in, uh, they will be recording, or hope the website will be um, featuring some of the recordings from SDG Action Awareness Week. So I'm just gonna put in some things in the chat here. Uh, hopefully you can all see that. There's a little survey to fill out if, uh, if you want to as well. So I'll just begin. Uh, I will start by sharing my screen. Let me just grab it here. And yes, hopefully you should all be able to see that now. Uh, or in a second. Can everyone see that? Yeah, good, perfect. Uh, so welcome, uh, bonjour tout le monde, uh, to this discussion panel entitled Reflecting on SDG Reporting in Higher Education Institutions. Thank you for being here with us this afternoon. Uh, merci d'être là aujourd'hui. Um, for those interested, I am going to be providing the presentation afterwards for those interested. So if you would like it, uh, you can email me at karen.ober at mcgill.ca. So I will put that in the chat as well, just now. Uh, so just you will have access to that. So I'm just going to, uh, to begin with uh, with um, a, uh, a land acknowledgement. Let me just grab this. Uh, let's see. So uh, I know that we're all joining from different territories today, but I will begin by acknowledging that McGill is on the land which has long served as a site of meeting and exchange amongst Indigenous peoples, including the Haudenosaunee and, and, and Anishinaabe nations. We acknowledge and thank the diverse Indigenous people whose footsteps have marked this territory on which people of the world, the peoples of the world now gather. So uh, to begin, I'd like to say a few words just by way of introduction to the topic, and then I will welcome our esteemed panelists. Um, there are increasing expectations for universities to embed the UN Sustainable Development Goals into their operations and academic missions and an equal expectation to report transparently about their contributing to the goals. Uh, there is also pressure to participate in SDG reporting, uh, particularly as an indicator of academic reputation. For example, 23 Canadian universities participated in the Times Higher Education Impact Ranking last year and nearly all of the, the U15 uh, major Canadian research universities. Um, so rankings can encourage competition instead of collaboration and can also become a mere exercise in public relations. However, SDG reporting also has the potential to motivate leadership to reconceptualize the role of higher education in society. Uh, UNESCO and the University of Bergen recently published a new report entitled Knowledge Driven Actions, Transforming Higher Education for Global Sustainability. And I have, uh, I have a link to that report in the, in the PowerPoint presentation, but you can also search for it online as well. And the authors make several recommendations, including, quote, global SDG higher education institution benchmarking system, which, unlike a ranking system that creates a competitive environment working from the top down, would qualitatively and quantitatively compare how higher education institutions advance different SDGs across three areas of education, research, outreach, with highest recognition given to those that holistically address a large number of SDGs across all their activities. So I do recommend uh, those to, who are interested in the topic to, to, look for that, um, to look for that report. I also want to mention that HESI, the Higher Education Sustainability Initiative, has also done a lot of good work on rankings, ratings, and assessments. Uh, HESI is a collaboration of multiple UN agencies, NGOs, and higher education networks for sustainability, and they have a multi-stakeholder working group which focus on rankings, ratings, and assessment best practices. So I also have a link to that in the presentation as well if you're interested. The goals were conceived as an agenda to eliminate inequalities, lift people out of poverty, and protect the planet from further degradation. They forced those in, higher in the higher education sector to think about how teaching, research, and community outreach can be put in the service of solving uh, interrelated social, economic, and environmental problems. A twofold question remains. How can Canadian institutions best support the fulfillment of the SDGs, and more importantly for this panel, what role can reporting, play in the pro uh, can reporting process play in, in that fulfillment? So with me today are four professionals who are experienced in the field of SDG reporting and either have completed or in the process of completing a reporting project. So our panelists are, I'll go back to my, my previous slide, sorry. Uh, our panelists are uh, Nicole Arsenault, Program Director, Office of Sustainability at York University. 
Jason Enns, Executive Director, Academic Policy Planning and Strategic Initiatives at Concordia uh, University in Montreal. Uh, Pierre Lemay, adjunct to the Vice Rector, External and International Affairs and Health, University of Laval. And Matthew Tyson, Director of Sustainability, University of Waterloo. So to get started, I'd like to go around the table. I'll stop sharing my screen. I know some of you have slides to share, but for now, I'll just uh, stop sharing my screen. Uh, and um, I'll have each panelist briefly indicate what has been their involvement in SDG reporting in the past. So let's start with Nicole, and then we'll go to Jason, Pierre, and Matt. So let me just stop sharing. Uh, sorry. Good Good afternoon, every oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody, and bonjour. Uh, so I'm Nicole Arsenault, I'm with York University, I'm the Program Director for Sustainability. And uh, first, I, I want to thank you for the invitation to being here. It's a pleasure to be here amongst uh, uh, these esteemed colleagues. Um, so sustainability at York is one of our core values. We have a holistic view of sustainability. Um, we have a sustainability that was developed uh, back in 20, 2017. Um, in terms of reporting, we did our first AC STARS uh, back in 2016, and we're currently in the process of um, working on our next submission. Uh, like many um, higher um, education um, institutions right now, we're starting to see that paradigm shift though, where we're not only focusing on traditional sustainability, we're really starting to integrate uh, the SDGs. York University's new academic plan, uh, Building a Better Future, um, has six priorities for action and a university-wide challenge to contribute to the UN um, Sustainable Development Goals. Um, so this was launched uh, back in 2020. Um, and so this past year, we actually did our first um, report. I'm gonna put the link in the chat, as well as we developed a website, um, which has stories and metrics associated with um, where we're at in terms of the SDGs. Um, we've also participated for the last three years in the Times Higher Ed Impact Ranking. Um, and that's about it for me at this point. Great, uh, Jason. Great, thanks um, for organizing, Karen, and for um, it's great to see all of you folks again. Nicole, I just saw you yesterday on another related <laughs> presentation. So it's great to be here and share a little bit about what's going on at Concordia and learn from all of you. Um, I'll just be very brief and to say that Concordia um, is maybe on this as, as roughly at the similar timeline to, to York with respect to having a, a long history and trajectory of uh, sustainability related action and a sustainability action plan and now thinking more, moving toward a more holistic view of what the SDGs mean for us as an institution beyond the kind of core uh, work that's being undertaken under sustainability. Um, we uh, participate in STARS, we um, uh, participate in the Times Higher Ed Impact Ranking, we have produced a kind of standalone report on our SDG related activities, and um, we're currently undertaking a voluntary university review, which is a form of institutional self-assessment in relation to the SDGs and using it to kind of guide our our strategy and um, and our reporting, our approach to reporting. So we're in the kind of in the midstream, and I'd be happy to share um, the the slide you have up there is actually an example, Karen, of of something that I've, I, I'm using as, as a, looking at as a potential model for how we would organize our our reporting. So we can maybe circle back to that as in the discussion uh, if it's relevant. You just uh, at a glance, uh, who we are at University Laval in Quebec City. So if you have a few numbers, of, uh, and as you can see, we are uh, a big campus with a lot of people uh, on it. So um, if when we are talking to uh, uh, about sustainability, it has to be uh, included in our culture. If you could just change, uh, please. So you will see that all our strategy since 2007 is to build a strong culture about sustainability. And, how, and with the emergence of the SDGs, it has to be also included in, in our culture. And just to, to have a look at how strong we, we are trying to do it, you can see that the, 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 this culture is explicitly written in our mission. Uh, if you change that, I saw in the later on in the presentation, I will be able to exchange with you about how we have been integrating the SDGs in our in our sustainability vision. 
also how we we are trying right now to build a, a cartography about the SDGs in our uh, uh, official documents in our courses and research project. And also, if you could just change your camera. So you will be able, we could get back with the, these two. The, the first graphic is the uh, uh, schematization of our uh, vision of sustainability. And you, as you can see, the, the SDGs are, are the, the lens or the focus of how we are uh, seeing it and how it is an impact in the societies, down the, our society, but the societies uh, from, uh, from our students and, our, and how we are, uh, have an impact of, uh, on communities all around the world. And you can see the, the, the representation of the, the, the ODD or SDGs on the cartography. And finally, Let's say that we are uh, we are carding a good importance of how we can measure the, the impact of uh, our action on SDGs. So we're using stars, and we are using the THE impact ranking. And I will be able to talk later on about uh, how we are doing. So thank you, everyone. Merci. Wonderful. So yeah, thinking about the University of Waterloo, um, we also have I think echoing a lot of the points before. Uh, uh, history of using stars, we've been responding to the Times Higher Education um, rankings. I, I think a lot of ours has been reflective on some of the strategic directions that the university has set out as well in our climate action plan, our environmental sustainability strategy, strategy and in our strategic plan with a number of deep connections to uh, sustainability. I think adding the lens of the SDGs is relatively new, but I think um, really helpful and so we're also going through the process of developing our first uh, SDG report which we're planning to release uh, this April um, and again it's been a really exciting exercise to do some of that mapping and identification on where there's the connections uh, from an institutional perspective uh, to to these global goals. Thanks Matt, thanks everyone for for giving your your background in the SDGs and, and, and reporting. Uh, let's move on to the discussion questions. Um, one thing that has come up, uh, I'll just I'll just start with it, is what data should universities report on exactly, and who should they report to? That's certainly a question that we have. You know, we can collect data on uh, on the SDGs, but who actually is accountable, uh, or who should be accountable? So I'll let anyone who wants to start jump in, uh, and we'll go from there. I'll maybe start very briefly, but I think one of the, the first things is kind of looking at other frameworks. I, I really appreciate the idea of the materiality of our academic mission being important. And so we often, I think in the sustainability space, get pulled into some of the operational uh, stuff, energy data, water data, waste data, um, especially as practitioners on the sustainability side. Um, but I think that needs to be coupled with core information about how we're integrating it into our teaching and our research. Um, and that's a little bit more abstract to do in some cases, but I think it's an important part of the conversation. That's just in terms of, of what we collect. I can, uh, I can add on what Mathieu had just said, but I believe we have to, uh, to report uh, to ourselves as a campus, as a community, uh, to our community members, but in, to our governance bodies, that's important that the, the, everybody's knowing what we're doing about the SDGs and we have to make it publicly available. Um, and we also have to understand our impact at a more global perspective it, and a ranking like the, the THE uh, is permitting this. And that's the who and the what now. Is, uh, we have to collect and, and share the data that are meaningful to us, to our students and to faculty members and our employees also. That, so we believe that at Laval, it has to be linked to our core mission. So create and share knowledge for, for the benefit of the society. So about, like Matt was saying, about the courses, about the research project, about the publications, and how our operations are contributing to the SDGs locally and internationally. On, on the question of what we're collecting and what kind of information we're collecting, I think it's, I mean, we have to maybe think about who we're collecting for and how we're just sharing and displaying that information. But one of the things that I'm keenly aware of, having been heavily involved in our own preparation of the Times 
higher education impact ranking submission and seeing what's collected, what data is collected for STARS and doing our own kind of SDG report. The, um, there's a very heavy emphasis on, um, on just simply cataloging activities and doing kind of keyword based analyses of both teaching like course descriptions or research publications. And um, having gone through the process of, of taking stock in that kind in those kinds of ways, I'm feeling like we're really ready to think further ahead than just simply key keyword based um, cataloging of activities on campus that have a thematic relationship with the SDGs. And really to start to think in the more strategic ways about where do we have the potential for impact as an institution, where can we focus our energies and our efforts making those kind of commitments and then following through with our reporting in order to reflect back how we're how we're actually realizing those commitments so that for me the the emphasis right now in thinking about reporting is not trying to lay the comprehensive landscape of all the things that are happening at the institution that are relevant to the sdgs because it's en it's almost endless but the more the question is where do we think we institutionally can have impact and put emphasis in all of our different domains and operations and our research and in our teaching. If I can uh, build, I think, on, on Jason's comments, and I think ahead, it's important to look at, um, you know, our geographic locations, our, you know, our institutions are all different. Mind you, you know, I think a lot of our institutions here on this panel are fairly similar, but, you know, thinking about different institutions, different cultures, de different demographics, and really localizing the SDGs based on, um, how they're of value to that particular institution, I think is really important. And I think drawing on, um, Karen, you already talked about the um, higher education um, sustainability initiatives that has great um, tools uh, for assessment and sort of determining how do, you, how do you rate and assess your institution. So I think those, those are really valuable tools that people can utilize. Yeah, definitely. Um, I want to maybe uh, go back to something that um, that Jason said because you had mentioned that you know that that it, it is impossible to be comprehensive with the SDGs. That it, it's important for institutions to be maybe more targeted. Do you think that? Um, and this is open to everyone as well as Jason. But do you think that each like is is that is that targeting going you know going to be happening at a at a university level like at an institutional level? Per you know, in each institution has to figure out where, what, uh, what aspect of the SDGs that they have to address, or is it? Do we have to figure out you know, on the level of higher education, what our impact will be, what our what our contributions will be? Does that make sense? Yeah, and I'll I'll just follow uh, the Cole's lead there, and that I, I I think it's a localized set of priorities in the sense of. Uh, this is the same thing that countries and cities do when they do their voluntary national and local reviews, as they determine. Where, what's our standing vis-a-vis -vis this broadly comprehensive set of, um, uh, of targets and indicators? Where do we need the most work and effort? Where do they have the most opportunities to make gains? And using that as the basis for establishing some kind of um, focus areas as, as an institution. So I think it, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean, just like with, with research strengths, it doesn't mean that if you identify a few strengths that you don't do anything else, it just means that those are the ones where you're really putting your capacities and assets as an institution behind to go as far as you can with them. Yeah, and I think um, maybe uh, Pierre can speak to this, but I think University of Laval has done a lot of work. I think uh, we had mentioned, someone had mentioned earlier about um, really uh, embedding the SDGs into the mission of the university and to, uh, into, you know, the, as you said, Pierre, the governance structure and, uh, you know, reporting to the community. Um, I just wonder if you can speak a bit more about how University of Laval uh, did that. How did they, you know, and, and where was, was their support coming from, from the upper administration? Like, how did that, how did that genesis, how did that, um, that embeddedness take place at University of Laval? Um, si tu me permets, je vais le faire en français parce que je pense qu'on a la traduction uh, simultanée. Donc, je, je, vais, je vais y aller juste en douceur pour permettre à tout le monde de switcher avec, avec uh, notre traducteur ou traductrice. Merci. Um, 
à l'Université Laval, la direction, euh, la haute direction de l'université euh, croit vraiment à l'importance d'intégrer euh, le développement durable dans, dans, à son plus haut niveau, dans ses instances décisionnelles que sont le conseil d'administration et notre conseil universitaire. Donc, c'est une, euh, une constance depuis 2007. Donc, euh, les gens y croient vraiment. Puis, on nous demande d'être capable d'avoir une stratégie qui va se déployer au sein de notre communauté par la suite, donc, euh, et d'avoir, d'être capable aussi de mesurer notre, euh, notre progression, c'est qu'on veut bâtir un tableau de bord là, euh, institutionnel. Donc, on, on, doit, on doit traduire les objectifs de développement durable, les SDGs, dans, dans, dans un langage qui est à la fois exécutif pour la direction, puis administratif, puis après ça, sur le terrain aussi pour euh, nos 50 ou 60 000 personnes qui forment notre communauté. Donc, euh, par exemple, avec notre nouvelle politique de développement durable qui vient tout juste d'être adoptée, euh, on, a intégré, on a intégré une approche qui va nous amener à discuter euh, formellement à chaque fois qu'il y a une politique administrative qui est révisée ou qui est créée. Donc, on va poser les questions aux porteurs de cette politique-là sur comment vous allez contribuer aux objectifs de développement durable à votre façon. Comment comprendre les enjeux, les risques et euh, les traduire en lien avec le pourquoi d'une politique X euh, ou d'une politique Y. Yeah, that's wonderful. That's a great answer. Um, and I think it leads nicely into, into our next question because Um, I, we, we, we've been talking about how do we, or sorry, Jason, you have been talking about how do we um, move beyond merely catalog, uh, cataloging the SDGs. Uh, and I think, Pierre, you've sort of answered the question of how do institutions report meaningfully on the SDG initiatives instead of merely cataloging them. So one way is to embed them into policies, to create policies that embed the SDGs. Um, and, and that, I think, also speaks to what you were saying, uh, Jason and, and Matt, as well, like um, embedding the uh, to, to sort of aligning the the, the mission or uh, and processes into uh, with the SDGs does anyone want to want to suggest other ideas about how to do that how to move beyond cataloging the SDGs I'll, I'll maybe jump in, in in a slightly different perspective I mean I think there's a difference between embedding the SDGs into policy between embed or or embedding sustainability in policies. The SDGs are one framework of how we can look across the SDGs. And, and I'm a bit actually skeptical whether it's um, appropriate to embed a specific framework into policy as opposed to, um, you know, we could easily look at something like STARS, which is another way of interpreting how sustainability is relevant for an academic institution. And of course, there's enormous amount of synergy and overlap between those. Um, but highly customized for, for an academic institution based on things that I think are very material. And so I think each institution has to do that learning journey of what's relevant, whether it's in the academic sense or in the operational sense. But I don't know that the, in my perspective, whether the SDGs as a reporting on, a, on an ongoing basis becomes that tool, maybe some institutions will choose for that to be. Maybe some institutions choose to place a significant emphasis on, you know, in your policies, do you review things like climate, um, social equity, and and I don't know, uh, health and well-being as as three focus areas that you commit to. Um, and I think the nice thing about the SDGs is it forces us to think about the interconnectivity between that, while then still giving us the ability to to drill down to some specific focus areas, because I think that is really necessary. As everyone knows, there's 17 targets, 100, or 17 goals, 160 something targets within the SDGs. It's impossible to put that into an evaluative framework, as opposed to making sure we're not um, unintentionally making trade-offs that leave other things forgotten about. That's very well said. Um, and, and as you were saying that, there's, uh, there's the SDGs, Um, are very heavily focused, I think, on, well, they're focused on development, of course, um, but there's, I think there's a large part of the university mission on, on as you were saying, like social, you know, equity, uh, diversity, social inclusion that are in the SDGs, but maybe not framed in the way that, that they are at the academic, at the higher education level. So what's missing if we use the SDGs as, as a framework? That's a good question. Anyone else want to jump in? 
I guess I was just going to say how, you know, the SDGs in of themselves are complicated, universities are complicated, um, and particularly large institutions, I think, um, and it's complicated to get to gather the data, to gather the quantitative, the qualitative data, and how do you measure impact, I think, is one of the things that people are really struggling with is how do you measure um, your impact and are you having an impact and, and measuring that growth. Um, so I think that's perhaps one of the challenges um, on how to meaningfully uh, report on the SDGs um, that I think we still need to figure out. I'll, I'll just jump in here to say too, and I'm, I'm super interested to see if anybody who's um, who's in the, the participant group here today has any ideas, but I've, I've done my own set of fishing around for or impact measurement tools. And I know there is a, a tool coming out of, I think it's Sweden, um, SDG impact assessment tool, impact measurement tool. I can't remember exactly the name of it. Um, nothing has seemed super satisfactory. Um, I don't know that we'll ever get to the point where we have an SDG equivalent of stars. I don't know if it's the right kind of framework and you can actually achieve that kind of comparability. But I think that's, that's kind of the next phase of where we're at is how do we do impact assessment in a way that there's not a one-to-one -one relationship between the assessment work and the activity that you're trying to assess because it can get, if you do really deep impact assessment, it's really time intensive and you can't do that across 160 some odd targets and indicators. So that's that's the trick is where, where, where really to put the focus and where to do that deep assessment of like, okay, what's our impact in this particular domain? And that's why I think the the, the question of focus and particularity is is really the important one for us and right now as an institution we're figuring out where to um, you know where to put attention maybe in a, in a complement of my, my last intervention the, the the meaning of reporting the SDGs will be if what we're thinking it will be if we it, it is a thinking with our stakeholders and for our stakeholders and in the core mission of uh, the university. So how can we build a methodology and approach that we're going to, to talk to the students and talk to the, the teachers and the faculty members? So, and, and, and that's why we're trying to do, and it will take some time, but I believe we're going to be able to doing it. What, what in which, in your course as a faculty member, how can you contribute to the SDGs? To which SDG or SDGs are you contributing? That's the same thing. How your research project is contributing to the SDGs, and we 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 can we can bring some methodologies in our systems to be able to help the students and the faculty members to to uh, to appropriate this language and that reasoning. For example. If you have a research declaration for your research project, each faculty or each researcher has to declare that research project to be able to be in the institutional database, research database. So you can add a question about for, for the researcher, to which SDGs are you contributing with that research project? And you can add some uh, activities to help them or to uh, workshops or atelier or things like that to help them to, to have a better understanding. So they will have to answer some questions. And with time, that questions will be more accurate and you will have an impact about, about the, the appropriation and the contribution to the SDG. That's, yeah, that's very interesting uh, about having the having, having researchers declare uh, what their you know what SDGs are are most relevant to their uh, to their work uh, at McGill. We have the McGill Sustainability Systems Initiative, and they are a network of it's not focused exclusively on the SDGs, but there is a network of researchers who um, who uh, who. Uh, where you can actually search the researcher by SDG or vice versa. So if you want to see what SDG the researchers are working on, um, it's called the MSSI dashboard. I'll try to put it in the chat a bit later on. Um, but I, I did want to comment on something uh, that came up is, you know, how, you know, especially in measuring social impact uh, and that to do a kind of evaluation of that impact is really time consuming. And that's an, another issue that seems to come up again and again when we discuss reporting on the SDGs is resourcing. 
Um, so, and also which unit is responsible for that reporting. Not every university has a sustainability office and some sustainability offices are more embedded in operations than they are in the academic mission. So, uh, and this is, this is more of a comment than really a question, but you know, it's something to consider is that if we do use the SDGs as a framework, where does that reporting system, where does that process belong? Uh, and who is in the best position to evaluate it, right? Um, as, as we've been saying, there's so many 169 targets, I think. So how do you <laughs> how do you make it manageable um, to even to even start reporting on, on something as broad as that? Um, does anyone else want to comment on that before I move on to the next question? Um, one question, another question I had uh, for discussion was, um, and this is more, I guess this is more theoretical, is that it, how do institutions determine what to commit to to support the SDGs and how can those commitments guide the reporting process? I think this comes back to something Jason said as well, rather than cataloging, um, what do you, and I think Pierre, you've also spoken to this too, um, but what can they do, what can institutions do to, to make a formal commitment that actually sticks? Um, and and how can that how can we start with that first and then move to the reporting process if that makes sense? Does anyone want to jump in? I'll I'll just throw out there that we're um, so we're we're currently in the middle of uh, of a seventeen rooms process, which is a, a cross institutional kind of half stock taking and half brainstorming exercise about what's already going on around this particular SDG and then what might we as Fire to do and what might a next step be. And we're going to use that as a process for, it's not going to be determinant in terms of our areas of focus, but it's going to help feed our thinking based on kind of pretty broad consultation with uh, a segment of our community, at least, to try to identify and, and bubble up some of those potential priority areas where there's energy and focus and capacity at the institution that we can say like, okay, these are things that we're really going to put an emphasis on. I think it also depends where institutions are in their overall strategic planning process. I mean, if you've already set, and most institutions will have, you know, a four or five year aggregate strat plan for the entire institution. And if that already has been laid out, I think it's difficult, maybe problematic or challenging to even overlay the SDGs and try to commit to a new set of, of institutional goals. Whereas using that as part of that strategic planning process might be more powerful way of, of leveraging that. Um, and, and again, it's not necessarily that you commit to the SDGs, but you commit to some of the topics within the SDGs, um, climate goals for the campus or, or, or research foci that you want to really bring forward. So I, I think that's where it becomes useful. Um, where I do see a lot of potential is the collaborations that have come out around the SDGs and committing to be part of those collaborations. Through example, um, you know, SDSN, of course, University Global Coalition was mentioned and, and others and, and being strategic and how you're partnering with other institutions and, and networks to, to share knowledge and, and have conversations like this, frankly, to, to be able to share that. So I think where the SDGs can, can be really powerful is in connecting, but I don't know that all of the institutional commitments need to be anchored in the SDGs, if that makes sense. Yes, for sure it does. Um, does anyone else wanna, wanna jump in? Sure, I can jump in here. Um, just reflecting, I guess, on some of my experience with York having embedded um, the SDGs within our university academic plan. And I also recently finished um, some research based on integrating um, the SDGs in universities. And some of the conclusions that I came in terms of best practices is really looking at the SDGs through that whole of institution um, approach and really looking at how can the SDGs be an integral part um, or a blueprint towards a sustainable university. Um, using the campus as a living lab as a tool to really accelerate uh, the integration of the, the SDGs. Um, the SDGs um, really looking for um, impact solutions oriented approach. Um, so really, um, you know, finding ways to have an impact. Um, and one of the things that I really stressed upon in, in some of the research that I did is that we really need to take a holistic approach, integrating indigenous knowledge and other uh, worldviews and different ways of knowing um, within our approach of, of doing things. 
peut-être pour à mon tour de, de sauter dans la discussion. Euh, donc, la question est à, à, quoi, à quoi se connaître et comment on le détermine. Hein? Souvent, à, nous, ce qu'on regarde là, de, de, de notre, de notre expérience de 15 années en, en, avec une démarche globale en développement durable, la première chose qu'on fait, c'est qu'on consolide qu'est-ce qu'on qu qu a déjà. Consolidation. Donc, comment on maintient et on améliore nos, nos réalisations. Donc, par exemple, l'Université Laval est carboneuse depuis 2015. Et on continue à essayer de réduire nos émissions de gaz à effet de serre pour essayer d'en en avoir moins à compenser. Puis on peut bonifier nos puits carbone, etc. Après ça, on essaie, puis de plus en plus, notre, notre prochaine stratégie de déploiement, de, de, de déploiement va beaucoup travailler sur, dans une approche beaucoup plus systématique, systématique avec les autres plan institutionnel. Nicole vient de, de le mentionner avec l'approche holistique. Donc, comment on, on, on lit le développement durable et les, et les ODD avec, par exemple, le plan euh, de, de, sur la réconciliation avec les premiers peuples? Comment on fait un lien bien précis avec le plan directeur immobilier ou d'aménagement de notre campus? Comment on fait un lien aussi avec l'appui à la réussite pour les études? Donc, on parle de l'ODD sur la lutte à la pauvreté ou l'éducation de qualité, il y a des liens très évidents qu'on peut faire pour favoriser cette, cette contribution-là et cette appropriation-là. Puis, le dernier morceau, on travaille aussi aux affaires externes, donc on peut, on peut et on doit travailler avec le milieu, avec les autres universités, mais avec les partenaires du milieu pour partager l'expertise qui inspirer nos communautés, nos partenaires, à, à prendre le chemin du développement durable. Par exemple, l'Université Laval a décidé d'être partenaire de la carboneutralité du château Frontenac à Québec. Donc, vous connaissez l'hôtel du château. Donc, c'est un choix qu'on a fait parce qu'on s'est dit qu'on va être capable d'inspirer, d'avoir un effet de levier et accélérer la roue, de, 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 accélérer, accélérer la roue du développement durable. That's wonderful. That's, that goes to what Nicole was saying in terms of real world projects, linking the academic mission to, to um, you know, to uh, the, the extra, <laughs> extra academic, the outside academic world as well. So that sounds like a really interesting project there. Um, I do want to, uh, we do have a couple of questions in the Q&A. Um, and I, we may have answered this, but, uh, but uh, if anyone else has something to add, Uh, from Ashley, we have uh, some universities are choosing to become certified, ranked, et cetera, using, uh, using more than one tool that is founded in the SDGs. So STARS, we had talked about in the Times Higher Education Impact Ranking. Uh, is there truly a value added with regards to progressing the transition toward a sustainable institution? So is there value added to the, to the uh, you know, transition to sustainability? Or would the main goals be assessing with many tools Sorry, would the main goals be behind assessing with many tools be to improve university reputation and increase visibility and recruitment? So there's a question. So I guess that to summarize, it's, um, in, you know, are there different goals in using different tools? And what do, what do you think about that? Just a very quick kind of high level response is this is a both and not an either or kind of situation where Yes, there are reputational and visibility and marketing uses of some of the exercises, uh, reporting exercises, but ideally they're feeding and fostering and advancing institutional development internally that's not focused really just on marketing and so on. So I, I, I approach it as a both and. Um, that's kind of a first way to respond to that question. C'est la même chose de mon côté, c'est uh, la même chose que Jason. Uh, I'll just add, for, for me, I, I like the, um, ob obviously with something like uh, Times Higher Education, the global profile of that ranking, I think opens up a very different conversation within university administration and stakeholders compared to something like STARS, which is very open source, highly transparent, very, um, I think, community developed from the higher ed sector. So I do think they play very different roles. I We use STARS to actually report and, and show our progress. Whereas I think THE and the way that that's developed, at least so far, is much more of a inspiration for us to move further and faster and do more and be thinking more holistically about how we're looking at sustainability. So I think both are important and they serve differentiated uh, roles. 
And if I could just add, I think, um, you know, looking at um, perhaps, you know, the Times Higher Ed impact ranking, um, I think it helps to move the agenda forward and embedding um, the SDGs within uh, the university. Um, so as much as there may be critics about, um, you know, reporting, um, I think it helps to drive the agenda as well, because I think it certainly has, um, you know, senior level um, attention. And I think it's really helpful to help move the agenda forward um, and, and continuous improvement and benchmarking against peers. And so I think there's value to it. Yeah, that's a great, uh, that's a great response. Yeah, I, I feel like uh, I feel the same way that, that it, you know, something uh, from the, uh, you know, from th that gets the interest of the upper administration to support the SDGs is, is, a, is definitely a value added uh, component. Um, I do have another question. Uh, we only have a couple minutes left, but we'll see if we can manage it. Um, it is, I'm curious to hear of any opinions on SDG 4 on quality education. Would a course based on global citizenship education made mandatory be beneficial in implementing at all institutions? For example, a mandatory course on all faculty, for all faculty departments and programs on GCED. Thank you in advance. Does anyone want to jump in? I'll just say we've, I think there's a lot of institutions that have looked at mandatory sustainability in, in many different ways formulated courses, and it, it can be valuable, it can be um, also just seen as like another thing that you might have to do, and so I think it's a balance of specific targeted courses like that, but even deeper how that's integrated across a particular program learning objective or outcome, like to be a qualified engineer or public health professional or whatever discipline you're in, how does that connect to these 17 SDGs? And that's something that I don't think gets captured ever in a single course. There's kind of breadth and depth requirements to, to really get to that as part of that program of study. So it, it totally depends on the program. It can be valuable. Um, I also think it can be kind of, um, depending on how it's deployed, uh, might be seen as, as challenging to implement as well. Yeah, anyone else uh, want to comment before we wrap up? I was just going to say there's some good examples out there. Um, University, I think, of Manchester, I think in um, some of the Australian universities, New Zealand universities um, have good examples as well that can be looked at. Cool. So uh, we are almost at time. I would like to thank everyone for joining us today and thank you to the panelists for your great answers to our questions. Um, it, as I said earlier, if you do want a copy of the, the PowerPoint, which I, I'm afraid I didn't show all the slides, but I also have I have that and the, the resources, if, if the panelists are okay with me sharing those slides. Um, I will also have a resource page on that uh, on that slide and I'll just give my email, uh, my email address for those who want it. Um, thanks again, and uh, I hope you all have a great day, and uh, we'll continue the conversation. I think there's definitely a lot of interest in this topic, um, you know, for, for, for further discussion, further, uh, uh, further development.